So today I'm talking about a P0087 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P0087 code? Well, it's a fuel rail system pressure too low. And what does this mean? Well, many modern vehicles, they now have two fuel pumps. They'll have a low pressure fuel pump inside the gas tank and then bolted to the engine, they're gonna have what's called a high pressure fuel pump. And this system of two fuel pumps, it could be very beneficial. It can help give better gas mileage. It can also give much better performance at higher RPMs and different things like this. But when you get a P0087 code, the computer's seeing that the fuel pressure is too low up at the fuel rail and that there's some kind of issue going on with one of these fuel pumps. And so it's gonna have to be troubleshooted to know why. And so what are some possible causes of a P0087 code? Well, it could be a bad fuel pressure sensor, could be a clogged up fuel filter, could be a bad low pressure fuel pump, could be a bad high pressure fuel pump, could be a bad cam follower, and possibly the fuel pressure regulator. And so one thing to note about these high pressure fuel pumps is that they're gonna be bolted to the engine and they're gonna be operated by a cam lobe that's pushing them in and out very rapidly. And there's gonna be what's called a cam follower or what's called a roller, depending on the vehicle. And sometimes these components can get damaged and they can come apart. And when this happens, they can't go into the engine and they can't get inside the engine oil. And so because of this reason, a lot of mechanics, when they get this code, they automatically go change the engine oil because sometimes there can't be metal shavings inside of there. And sometimes fuel can even leak inside of there. So if nothing else, be sure to check your engine oil and be sure that's not happening. And so there's gonna be some different ways to go about troubleshooting a P0087 code. The most common way is gonna to be to use a fuel pressure gauge and check to see what the fuel pressure is. Some vehicle manufacturers don't make this easy while others do. Some manufacturers like VW, they'll have a port right on the high pressure fuel pump that you can attach to. A lot of Fords and Chevys, they'll have a port that you can attach to right up at the fuel rail. But if you have like a Kia, a Hyundai, a Toyota, something like that, quite often they don't give you a port that you can attach to fuel pressure gauge to. So you have to use different attachments and you'll have to go in line. Like this is a Kia right here where you have to go in line and use a T to hook up the fuel pressure gauge. But basically what you do is you hook up a fuel pressure gauge and then you start up the engine and you check to see what the fuel pressure is. When the engine's idling, only the low pressure fuel pump is gonna be working and it should be at the rated PSI that that fuel pump is rated to be putting out. The fuel pressure that the vehicle is rated to be running at can be different. It could be 50 or 60 or even 70 PSI. You're gonna have to look that up for your specific vehicle to see what it is supposed to be running at. But basically you check to see what the fuel pressure is when the engine's idling and if it's too low then you know there's an issue with that low pressure fuel pump but if it's at the right pressure then you know that's not the problem if you have an obd2 scan tool at the same time you're checking the fuel pressure with the engine idling check to see what the sensor is saying that the fuel pressure is if this is off say the engine's supposed to be running at 60 psi and you use a fuel pressure gauge and it is running at 60 psi but you check it with an obd2 scan tool and the sensor is reporting like 40 psi or something like that something different then very likely there's a problem with the fuel rail pressure sensor and you go check that out it could be a bad sensor or it could be in the wiring or something like that but doing this test can help eliminate the low pressure fuel pump, the fuel pressure sensor, fuel filters, things like this. If those things all check out good, what you could do is you could drive the vehicle and basically the high pressure fuel pump isn't gonna kick in until you really start putting a load on the engine. So if you start driving the vehicle around and you go to step on the gas and it box down or something like this, then you know there's some kind of issue going on with that high pressure fuel pump. There is a solenoid that operates this high pressure fuel pump that can be checked out. You can't check out the wiring going to it and different things like this because sometimes that solenoid does does go bad and if the solenoid goes bad then that high pressure fuel pump's not going to work the next thing to do would be to take that high pressure fuel pump off and to check out all the components to see if they're good or not one thing about these high pressure fuel pumps is that there is high pressure inside of those lines so you will need to relieve that pressure before you take them apart usually you can do this by unplugging the solenoid going to them and then starting up the engine and just letting the system run out of gas. But there is different high pressure fuel pumps. So be sure to look up the procedure for your particular vehicle. Since that gas pressure is very high inside of those lines. Sometimes these high pressure fuel pumps are hard to get to. For example, here's a 5.3 liter Silverado. And you have to take off the intake manifold to get to it. There's other manufacturers like Honda, they'll be bolted right on the outside of the engine. So they're much easier to get to. But basically the next thing to do would be to take it off and examine all the components. And there's going to be a push rod along with the spring that's on the high pressure fuel pump. And then there's either going to be what's called a cam follower or a cam roller. These cam followers are going to be flat while the cam rollers are going to have little roller wheels. And those components are going to ride on the cam lobe. And so if there's anything wrong with them, if they look like they're worn out or anything like this, damage, any kind of problems going on there, then that's going to cause issues. Also be sure to check out this cam lobe because if that cam lobe gets damaged or it gets wore out or anything like this, then it's not gonna be pushing on that high pressure fuel pump and that's gonna cause issues. But the next thing to do would be to take off that high pressure fuel pump, check out all the components, see if they're damaged. 
and very likely at that point to go ahead and replace that high pressure fuel pump. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0087 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.